In today's video, we have to cover the negative side of the sales industry. Now this video could easily be an hour long, maybe even a day or a week long or even a year for that matter. But we're going to keep it short and sweet. I got a couple of categories I'm going to hit. We're going to try to stay on pace and get this wrapped up in five minutes for you guys. Anybody who's looking for sales jobs, anybody who's wondering about sales, anybody who's done sales before, maybe you're just looking to see if other people had the same experience, this video is for you. Go ahead and hit the like button and we'll jump into this. So number one, your car. Let's talk about the car thing. You got to use your car, your gas, your mileage, your maintenance. Will you get a check from your company? Sure. You will get a check. And if you're coming out of college or you don't know about sales, you don't, you, you've never had sales experience prior, it's easy to get tricked by this number. Maybe on the contract or during interview, your interviewer or your, your future manager mentions you're going to get $500 a month just from using your vehicle. $500, an extra $500. 12 months a year, six grand. Wow, I'm going to get six grand a year just for being out in my vehicle? It's a total, total trick. It doesn't even, I mean, it barely covers even the fuel these days, yet alone the maintenance and the fact that with a sales job, I mean, you're basically completely destroying your vehicle in one, maybe two years, depending on your route and how much you actually drive for your position. Those of you who have a little more distance to cover, you're pretty much going to ruin your car in, in, in a maximum of two years, right? And then when you have to replace an entire car, which is $15,000 for a decent used one, are those checks adding up anymore? Didn't think so. Number two, let's talk about the pay. Usually you're on salary position, sometimes base plus commission, but then the base is basically the basement floor. And you never get paid for all the stuff they don't tell you about. In sales, you have so many roles. You're not just a salesman. People don't get this. How, how, how are people missing this? When you sign up for a sales position, you're a salesman, you're a customer service representative, you're a delivery driver. And above everything else, potentially the hardest thing to deal with, you're a, you're a psychologist. You're a therapist to a lot of these people. You're out there cold calling, busting your ass in and out of the car all day. And you got to sit there and smile, listen to a 20-minute story about how the person that's telling you $5 is too much for a box of coffee just lost their husband in a forest fire. I mean, it's crazy. And what are you going to do? Cut the conversation out, never get the sale? You got to go in, ab above and beyond mentally uh, to even tolerate a sales job. People want to tell you their life story. People want to talk your ear off all day while you got 10 unanswered emails and you got people calling your phone wondering where their box or whatever is. You got to digest all this at once. Get it all done before the day's end. And if you work extra hours, are you paid for it? No, because it's base plus commission. You're not paid hourly. You have your salary and then you get commissions on top of it. And that's in a good role. Some of them are straight salary. WB Mason, 40K salary. Just to run the whole show and do everything? Ridiculous. So it's the multiple roles thing that you guys got to realize. If you're watching this video thinking about getting into sales and you're wondering, like, maybe I should think twice, you should think five times. Are you ready to be a psychologist and a therapist? Are you ready to also take your own vehicle and put dirty boxes in the back seat and run them out to your customer when stuff doesn't get delivered just so you don't lose the account and then hear it from your manager that you're losing accounts and that your numbers are going down? Are you ready for that? You should be. Another one, technology. It's ruined the ability to be successful in sales unless you've been in the industry long enough to where you've already established your book of business. And what I mean by this is any customer, any shop, any place you walk into cold calling, trying to open an account or get an order, the information they have is available at their fingertips. They have an iPhone. So let's say you work for a business supply company. Simple sale, paper. Let's talk about a carton of paper. You're just trying to move paper. You got a good sale, $24.99. It's below cost. You got, you know, approved by a manager to sell something below cost just to open an account. You walk in, you say, hey, how are you? I'm with this company, XYZ. Is there a chance you need any, you know, extra copy paper after you have a little conversation with the person at the front desk or eventually you get to who handles the purchasing? 
they're going to hop on their phone, and if they can find it at a cent cheaper anywhere else, they're going to deny you. You got to realize in the 1980s, the 90s, and er and even the early 2000s, people would give you their business. They would give you a shot at earning their business account. If you were a good, reliable person who could talk well, you were friendly, the person knew you were going to be reliable and that they could count on you, even if they had to pay a couple bucks extra per item. Not a big deal. It's more important for a business not to get screwed, to make sure they have their items so they can run their business and be smooth and operating than to save 10 cents on a, on a box of pencils for their classroom. So you got to realize it's going to be really, really difficult in this day and age to even close deals or maintain a customer with technology because people are going to get bored. The purchasing people, the people that get paid by their company to make sure they're getting their items and their supplies at a good price from a good company. All they're going to do is shop around. They're going to shop the shit out of you. They're going to shop the fucking shit out of you. And they don't give a fuck if you're nice in this day and age. They don't give a fuck. I could tell you that right now. If they can save, if they can save 10 cents, who gives a shit if you have some stuff in common? You're not getting that order. So you got to realize you're going to run into the technology buzzsaw. That's probably the hardest thing to overcome in the modern day sales world. And every month, you know, prices go up. When you run a supply route, even if you have a well-established account, a month goes by and your managers behind your back are going to raise the item the item costs a couple of bucks. Then your customer rings your phone and says, "Hey, I got these last month for 9.99. Why are they 14.99 now?" And you got to either negotiate with them, maybe lose the account, go back to your manager, deal with that bullshit, and tell them that if you do keep the price where it's at now, you're going to lose the account. It's just a mess every time. Another thing you guys got to realize is your mental, the strain mentally that you're going to have. When you're in sales, there's no ability to turn your brain off. If you have a simple, run-of-the-mill, nine-to-five job that doesn't require the extensive mental capacity that sales does... When you get to the weekend, you can just chill and vibe and go have fun, not worry about it. Monday comes around, no big deal. You show up to the office, go to the break room, grab a coffee, twiddle your thumbs, sit at your desk, get your tasks done, and you're off, right? Easy. Sales? No. Because your phone's going to ring on the weekends. Your phone's going to ring in the morning. Your phone's going to ring at 8 at night. You're asleep, but you can't sleep well because you think maybe the ringer's going to go off. I mean, anytime you're even close to your phone, it's like a bomb going to go off. I mean, you're worried about that thing just ringing and someone's chewing your head off because you sent the wrong package and now they don't have the supplies to even run their business that day. So there's no mental turnoff. There is no off switch mentally when you're in sales. You can't do it. You cannot do it. You cannot turn your mind off. And the other thing is the unknown about being called into work on a random day or working extra hours for things that are not your fault. You take an order and then you get a call from your manager saying that particular order didn't make the truck that day. What? You're telling me I worked two months. Cold called, got denied. Cold call again, checked on him, got denied. Cold call again, really wanted that deal, denied. Finally, the company they've been using screwed up. You finally get your chance. You get your first order to earn this new business account. And they didn't even get the order on the truck for the day. The customer is not even going to get what they need for that day to run their business. So then what, what happens? Does your manager say, oh, don't worry about it. We'll compensate you for that account. No. You got to drive your own car with your mileage and your gas all the way back to the warehouse to pick up the exact items and bring it to the customer yourself. You're a delivery man. I mean, it's nuts. I mean, you, you got to do all this stuff, deal with people's issues. There's always issues with invoicing and pricing and people thinking they got overcharged and then you're an accountant. There's another role. You're a delivery man, a salesman, an accountant, a therapist, uh, I, I'm a, a, a friend, uh, you know, it's, it's nuts. It's nuts what you got to go through, what they don't tell you about sales. Most people that walk into this industry, they think, eh, not too bad, Drive around, I'll have freedom, I'm in my car, I'll listen to my music, stop in a couple places, I should be able to get a couple orders. I'm sure if I get an order, it'll be delivered, no problem. Nah, not happening. And the other thing, the last thing that I'll go over in today's video to try to keep this thing under 10 minutes, there's just no job security. Because as soon as your numbers aren't good, as soon as your growth isn't still on a parabola, increasing. Because they don't want consistent numbers. They might tell you at hiring, we want you to open one account a day, 
every day for the month. So if it's a 20-day month, we'd like to see a minimum of about 20 accounts, 20 new business accounts on your book of business this, this month. Well, six months of you maintaining that exact pace go by, and then they want more, and then they want more. And then why is this category lacking? And then why aren't you selling the same amount of toner? You get what I'm saying? It never stops. There's no job security. As soon as you're not out there breaking your back to have better and better and better and better numbers, what's the company going to do? They're going to write you a fake 30-day notice, completely irrelevant. Say you don't know how to use a computer. Say you don't know how to breathe air. Say if you don't breathe air in the next 30 days, you're fired. You better start breathing air. 30 days go by, they already know they're going to fire you. The 30-day notice thing. If you ever get a 30-day notice in sales, don't show up to work the next day. Stay at home, twiddle your thumbs, say you're sick, say you don't feel well, collect as much money as you can, you're fired anyway. There's no way to maintain your job once you get a 30-day notice. You cannot do it. They already know they're firing you. They give you that notice, so then they have a legal obligation to fire you. So if you get a 30-day notice, you're being fired in 30 days. There's another hint. But there's no job security because as soon as you fall off here with your numbers, as soon as you're not going above and beyond, you're getting talked to by a manager. You're getting the pressure put on you to do better and better and better and better. For a lot more money? No, for the same amount of money. Same amount of money. They might even, pr- they might even promise you an increase in your base salary and then say, there's a policy change. And if you eventually get to a stalemate to where you're not happy, you're sick and tired, you almost don't care if you get fired, your managers are getting pissed because your numbers aren't good, what's going to happen? They'll fire you, kick you out the door like you're a freaking robot, divide up all those nice accounts that you got from hard work, and just sprinkle them out to the other sales reps. John gets two accounts, Amy gets two accounts, Lauren gets two of your accounts, Nick's new. He'll take over four of your accounts. That's what happens. They just divide up your book of business. The other sales reps can take a portion of it. You get kicked down the down the street, and then they hire some new whippersnapper fresh out of college for a bottom barrel wage because he doesn't know what's coming, and they're going to have him kick ass for six months thinking he found a career opportunity because his title says account executive, and it sounds cool. So that's all I got, guys. I could make this thing an hour long. If you want to know anything more about sales specifically, leave me some comments below. I know everything about the industry through and throughout. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We got a lot to cover. I have a lot of experience in a lot of different categories, and I'm just tired of holding it in. I mean, the list is long, and it ain't good. It ain't pretty, but we're going to bring out the facts on this channel. Too much experience at this point to not let you guys know the real deal on all of these things. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, hit like on this video, and I will see you in the next rant.